My 29-year-old female, husband, 40-year-old male, told me today we would spend the day with his buddy who stood up in our wedding and his family. He has his sisters and mom in town visiting, and we are all watching football, eating food, and having a good time overall. At some point, I noticed my husband had been giving advice to our friend's little sister, a young teenage girl maybe, 14-year-old female. She is a freshman in school. I didn't think much of it since we were all having fun and talking. He makes comments about having her call him if she ever needs anything, like multiple times to call him ever. Even before her first dates, I don't really care and go along with it because he thinks as an only child, he knows best. It's pretty obvious at a certain point that he had drunk too much. I had to literally hand him a plate of food to eat or else he would not have eaten. He falls into the hot tub that we are all sitting around later in the evening and decides to take off everything besides his boxers and sits next to the teenager the whole time talking to no one else but her. This is where I start to keep a close eye, being a victim of CM in my young years from my mom's previous boyfriend. I'd like to think my husband is just being a good friend and advice giver, but he is in his underwear and only paying attention to this young girl the whole seven hours we are there. I mention his name and say we should go home as we have dogs to let out and he has to be at work early in the morning. I get called a party pooper, so I shut my mouth. After everyone decided to leave, I throw him the dry clothes his friend grabbed for him and we pack up to leave. He hugs this girl multiple times, goodbye, and kisses her forehead while saying, call me babe, I'm serious, anything you need. Her brother, our friend, says, well, call me first, obviously. He also gave her multiple hugs, maybe four to five. I get him and everything we brought to the car and say how uncomfortable this experience was for me. Not only did he just talk to her the whole time, but he also asked her to call her multiple times and then left with calling her babe and kissing her forehead. I'm sorry, but she has older brothers. She doesn't need a creepy uncle as well. So as I drive us home, I bring this up and he isn't too happy with getting called out and starts yelling at me. So I pull the car over to a parking lot. I do so and he starts a rant about how the car and my phone are his since he paid for them and takes my phone from me. I said I could call an Uber home for myself if he really wanted to drive his drunk self home. He called me a jerk and said I have personal issues I can't get over, but never apologized for his words or actions. Yes, I may have my own misconception of how adults should act towards children, but if it's not your blood relation, you don't need to get that involved. Yes, he has good advice, but to only pay attention to a teenager all night while in just your boxers creeps me out. It gave me total grooming vibes, and I just wished I could talk openly with the man that I call my best friend and love. So I said to him after he threw a fit that he has two options. Get in the car and we can go home and discuss this or I'll go alone. He told me to leave through the insults and threatening to call the police on me for a stolen car since he bought the car for me to drive since I moved to this state for him and left my paid off vehicle back in my home state. Now I'm sitting at home with my dogs wondering if I jumped the gun at attacking him and could have taken a different route on how to talk to him about this. He wants me to leave the state and go back home. Now he's calling me and texting that he's just sitting there still wanting me to come save him. Am I the idiot? Edit, for those asking and assuming he groomed me, that is not at all the case. I was 26 when we met and started dating. I didn't expect this many responses and accusations for him being into gross child stuff. It is honestly making me nauseous reading some of these comments. We've always gotten along, and he knows my view on predators and always says men like that shouldn't be alive. He is also very passionate about helping put an end to human trafficking and saving kids and thinks it's God's plan for him one day. Idik. He got a ride home from a friend, and I woke up with him in bed. I've moved to the couch and plan to talk through things tomorrow after he gets home from work. Edit 2. Also, to point out but not defend the creepy behavior, the girl was completely comfortable talking to him and having him point out different perspectives. In the first 10 minutes they arrived, she was on the ground eating and he gave her his seat and told her to sit down. 
He also said something to her on the lines of being present when you are with family and visiting family. For her to not be on her phone was a good thing. I don't want the idea to be given that she was cowering in a corner. She was sitting up in the ledge and intently listening. She also was saying, yes, I'll call you if I need to. She's very mature for her age and has nose and belly button piercings. She hugged him also to point out and all of us when they left. I don't think this matters at all. My husband needed to set boundaries and put on swimming trunks. She never was uncomfortable, but that does not make this okay. She was probably trying to be impressive being around adults and her mom let her drink two glasses of champagne. I'm not going to tell how people to parent, but let's just say I was the most and only uncomfortable one. Update. This isn't a very big update, but still long as I am still fuming and there is lots to be resolved. However, I did not expect this many replies and comments. Thank you to everyone who pointed out things I may have missed and for the clarity of not being the crazy one in this situation. Firstly, I am completely ashamed of myself for not ending this situation head on. I knew I should have pulled him out of the hot tub by his neck. I feel very disappointed in myself for not being strong. For those asking and further details I left out, the hot tub was attached to a pool with a ledge. I was in my clothes and my husband was next to me for some of the time before he stripped off his pants. I couldn't have moved in between them because of the ledge. He was offered swimming trunks by a couple of people, including myself, and declined, just like he declined to eat anything. I should have stopped things there, and I know this, unfortunately, too late. The teenager was adopted and was visiting the state with her older sister and mom. Her adopted dad passed away from cancer eight years ago. She was born addicted to drugs and went through withdrawal as a baby. I feel so bad for this girl, as we all do, and wanted to make her feel loved and comfortable. My husband was completely in the wrong for his actions and behavior by being in his boxers and kissing her, calling her babe. I reached out to our friend slash her older brother and also her older sister before the girl's flight out today. I apologized for my husband's actions and said that I hope she didn't feel uncomfortable and that I should have brought him home sooner as he was drinking too much. The older sister texted back, no worries, me. I think kiddo appreciated the chat and didn't take it the wrong way at all. It was great to see both of you. The brother said he understands me but didn't see anything wrong with the situation. My husband, on the other hand, did not go into work today. I did laundry and grocery shopping and got home to him sitting on the couch. After a heated conversation of me telling him how wrong he acted, I asked how he thinks being in his boxers is okay. How does he think calling anyone babe is okay? How does he not see that if it was an adult, it would be borderline cheating? So having it be with a teenager only makes it much, much worse and creepy. He stated in his defense that he is going to quit drinking. He doesn't see how trying to help her out and be there for her is wrong. He agrees after multiple times of me bringing it up that he should not have been in his boxers. He says she has been self-harming and he wanted to be there for support. He wanted to be there for her with any problems she may be going through and that I shouldn't be getting jealous. He also said that he is texting the older brother and that he isn't being told that anything was out of place. So I'm the only one who sees this as a problem. If I was mad before, I am now livid. I screamed at him now, yes, that I am not jealous of a effing teenager who is still developing. I am furious, disappointed, creeped out. There is no reason he needs to be her support channel. She has brothers and sisters, and if she needs to talk, she can talk to me a female, not him. I said he can delete her number, if it isn't obvious, and he said she has his, not the other way around. Her brother gave her my husband's phone number. WTF. I really hope he isn't blind and didn't do this. Our situation is complicated. I am states away with my dog and just got a job here, starting next week. I haven't worked for the past few months because of our wedding and we have been traveling for his work, three different states. So I am just now paying off my bills and getting money back into my account. I think in the next few weeks, I will be keeping my distance, sleeping on the couch, and maybe getting a hotel room while I save up to fly back home and reset. I just don't know what will come next and I'm still in shock. 
Happy New Year to me. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. In retrospect, maybe approaching it while he was still drunk was a bad idea, and the next morning might have been a better time. He should be embarrassed and apologetic. His behavior was inappropriate and gross. It doesn't sound innocent, but if it was, it's easily misconstrued, and he's rude and oblivious. Comment 2. How could you even ask yourself if you jumped the gun? Reread your post. If my husband did half of the things yours did that night, we'd be heading right towards a divorce. What a creepy, nasty man. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, back again with an update on the situation with my husband and his inappropriate behavior towards our friend's teenage sister. I'm still reeling from everything that's happened and I've got some new developments to share. First off, let me give you a bit of background on my husband and me. We met when I was 26 and he was always the type to go out of his way to help others. He's been passionate about ending human trafficking and has always said he feels it's his calling to save kids. That's why his behavior the other night was so out of character and shocking to me. After the incident, I reached out to the girl's siblings to apologize for my husband's actions. Her older sister seemed to brush it off, saying the girl appreciated the chat and didn't take it the wrong way. Her brother didn't see anything wrong either, which only added to my confusion and frustration. My husband didn't go to work the next day, and when I got home from running errands, we had a heated conversation. I confronted him about his behavior, and he defended himself by saying he was just trying to be supportive. He mentioned that the girl has been self-harming, and he wanted to be there for her. He also said he's going to quit drinking and that he doesn't see how being in his boxers was a problem. I was livid. I told him there's no reason for him to be her support channel when she has siblings and that if she needs to talk, she can talk to me. I demanded he delete her number, but he said she has his number, not the other way around. Apparently, her brother gave it to her, which just made things even more complicated. Now, here's where things took a turn. I've been keeping my distance, sleeping on the couch, and considering getting a hotel room while I figure things out. But then, my husband's phone buzzed with a text from the girl's brother, and I couldn't help but glance at it. It read, Hey man, thanks for talking to kiddo the other night. She's been going through a lot, and it's good to have another adult to confide in. I was stunned. It seemed like her brother was actually thanking my husband for his behavior that night. I confronted my husband about it, and he showed me the full conversation. They had been discussing the girl's issues, and my husband had been giving advice on how to handle her self-harming tendencies. I was torn. On one hand, I was relieved that there was no ill intent, but on the other, I was still uncomfortable with how close he was getting to this young girl. I told him that while I understand he wants to help, there need to be boundaries, especially considering how it looks and how it made me feel. We argued back and forth, with him insisting he was just being a good friend and me trying to make him see that his actions could be misinterpreted. It was a mess, and I was starting to question everything about our relationship. In the midst of our argument, my husband's phone rang. It was the girl calling him for advice. I watched as he answered, trying to keep my emotions in check. He talked to her calmly, offering support and suggesting she speak to a professional about her issues. After he hung up, he turned to me, his expression earnest. See, I'm just trying to help, he said. I didn't know what to think. Was I overreacting? Was I letting my past cloud my judgment? I felt like I was in a whirlwind of emotions, trying to grasp at any sense of normalcy. As I sit here typing this, I'm still unsure of where we stand. My husband is adamant that he's doing the right thing, and I'm still uncomfortable with the whole situation. I'm starting my new job next week, and I'm trying to save up enough money to maybe go back home and reset. But for now, I'm stuck in this state of limbo, wondering if I'm the one who's got it all wrong. My sister's jail time won't delay my wedding, so I laughed when parents begged. They missed the I do's, but the reception reveal left them speechless. For a little context, I am 23 years old and male. I was always the disappointing child, while my younger sister, Gigi, who is 20 years old and female, was always the favorite. 
As soon as she was born, my parents Julia, 46 years old, female, and Harris, 48 years old, male, always favored Gigi. A week before Gigi was born, my grandmother Gianna passed away, so my mom named her Gigi in honor of my grandmother. The problem here is that my parents always favored Gigi, no matter what, which resulted in my family and me not being close. Now, my fiancé and soon-to-be wife, the beautiful Remy, 22 years old, female, and I are having our wedding next week on January 8th. I proposed to her in late 2022, and my family was supportive. We have been planning our wedding throughout the entire year of 2023 and are very excited about it. We planned the date for September 2023, invited everybody, chose the food, outfits, and everything else needed for a wedding. The date was perfect for everyone, and we planned it with Remy's family, who lives in France. The problem is that last month, Gigi was arrested for a DUI, drinking under the influence, and she got one month in jail. Of course, my family is on Gigi's side, saying it's unfair since she's only a kid. Personally, I disagree. Gigi is 20 years old, and she's an adult. This sentence could be a time for her to think and sort herself out, as she could have ended the life of someone or herself. Since she's sentenced for a month, obviously, she won't be able to attend my wedding. I was kind of bummed about it, as she is my sister, and I would have loved to have her on my special day. However, my parents said it's unfair that I should have my wedding while she's in jail, and I should change the date so she can go. I discussed this with Remy, but we both agree that it's far too late, and her family has already booked their tickets to come see the wedding. We also agreed that it's unfair to cancel on around 40 people just because of one person, and it would be too much stress and panic. I told my family this, and they said I was being rude, and they wouldn't come without my sister. So, I told them not to speak to me again if they're not going to be supportive of me. I told my family that they were always favoring Gigi, and it's cruel of them to never be there for me. We had a lot of arguing, and that's when I said if they don't come to my wedding, they shouldn't bother contacting me ever again, and I never want to speak to them again. I feel like I overreacted. I received a lot of angry texts from them, and even some from aunts and uncles. However, this hurts because my sister has an excuse not to come, but they have none. Throughout my life, they left me out, and this was the one time they could have shown that they loved me. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Hugs for having your parents prioritize your sister's jail time, which I find very suspect because usually the first ticket isn't jail unless something else happened when she got the ticket. You can't wave a magic wand to change the date. So get married. Your parents will always be a disappointment to you because you were never their priority after your sister was born. If you haven't gotten therapy, please get it. Tell your parents you cannot change the date, and if they want it changed, they need to pay for it. Obviously they can't because they couldn't get a lawyer for your baby sister. Go LC. I would also post on your book of faces that since your sister was arrested under the influence and couldn't make the wedding because of her poor choices, your side of the family has decided not to go to the wedding as a show of solidarity to your sister. Comment two, not the idiot, end, but you're starting your own new life with your spouse. It hurts, but indifference would probably be more effective. Oh well, sorry you can't make it. People who are there for you get to be a part of your lives going ahead. If it takes anger and ultimatums to get them there, do you really want them there anyway? Now you're in the position of not being sure who might show up last minute, having them show up anyway only to complain the whole time, etc. I'm sorry that they suck, and I hope you have a beautiful wedding and a lifetime of happiness. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been two weeks since my last post, and boy, do I have an update for you. Remember how I told you about my sister Gigi's DUI and how my parents wanted me to postpone my wedding? Well, things escalated quickly after that. First off, let me give you a bit of context about my relationship with my parents. Growing up, I always felt like I was living in Gigi's shadow. She was the golden child, the one who could do no wrong in their eyes. I remember this one time when we were kids, I won a school science fair. But the same day, Gigi had her first ballet recital. Guess who got all the attention? 
Yep, Gigi. It's been like that my whole life. So, back to the present. After I told my parents that the wedding would go on as planned, they were furious. They tried to guilt trip me by bringing up how Gigi was named after our late grandmother Gianna and how she would have wanted us to be together as a family. But I stood my ground. Remy and I had been planning this wedding for a year and her family was flying in from France. There was no way we could change the date. The week before the wedding, things took a turn for the dramatic. My parents, still adamant about not attending without Gigi, tried to rally the rest of the family against me. They called up aunts, uncles, and cousins, telling them that I was being selfish and inconsiderate. But to my surprise, not everyone took their side. My Aunt Rosa, who had always been kind of a black sheep in the family, called me up to say she supported my decision and would be there with bells on. Then, three days before the wedding, I got a call from Gigi herself. She was in tears, apologizing for everything. She said she had a lot of time to think in jail and realized how much she had taken our parents' favoritism for granted. She told me she didn't want me to postpone the wedding on her account and that she was sorry for all the years she overshadowed me. It was a conversation I never thought we'd have. The day of the wedding arrived, and it was beautiful. Remy looked stunning, and the ceremony was perfect. Aunt Rosa and a few other family members who decided to come were there, but my parents were noticeably absent. It hurt, but Remy and I were surrounded by love and support, and that's what mattered. Now, here's the juicy twist. During the reception, just as Remy and I were about to have our first dance, the doors to the venue burst open. In walked my parents, looking sheepish but determined. They came up to me, and my mom was the first to speak. She said they had made a huge mistake and that they were sorry for not supporting me. They realized that they had been unfair to me all these years and that missing my wedding would have been something they'd regret forever. But that's not all. My dad pulled me aside and confessed something that rocked my world. He told me that the reason they had always been so protective of Gigi was that she wasn't actually his biological daughter. My mom had an affair shortly before Gigi was born, and they had kept it a secret all these years. They favored her because they felt guilty about the circumstances of her birth. <coughs> Mother skips my wedding for a trip, so I cancel her invite. She played the victim, but when she needed help, I remembered her absence and... My mom is an overly ambitious person. She is an inspiring and powerful woman. She was a teen single mom with me, and she eventually married a decent man who allowed her to be a stay-at-home mom. She stayed home until I was in high school and then went to college to become a nurse. She became a nurse and then went on to get her master's degree. Then she got pregnant. So when I was 18, she decided to become a new mom and start over. She is also a triathlon runner who works so hard that she has injured herself multiple times. She really wanted a better life for herself and she achieved it. Unfortunately, it felt like the other side of this coin is that you often can't have it all without sacrificing something. She quickly advanced in her career, had a new baby, and also tried to be the best wife with the best body. It often made me feel pushed aside literally. Before my sister was even born, they told me I had to leave because she was taking my room. I ended up going to Job Corps, getting a decent job, and eventually starting a family of my own. Throughout this time, I have desperately felt like I needed a mom, or a dad, or anyone. I tried so hard to be close to her, all while watching them completely ignore me and my children and dote on my new sister, only a few years older than my kids. My mom has never FaceTimed my kids or called them just to talk, ever. She never asks about them unless it's, what do they want for their birthday? My mom gets annoyed when I call because she is so busy. My kids are 2.5 and 5 now, and she has seen my oldest five times and my youngest only three times ever, mainly because I have desperately tried to see her and make it happen. She makes it very obvious that we are an inconvenience, even if she tells us how much she loves us or how nice it was to see us at the end. Not having any support was very hard. I started to finally give up and distance myself because I felt she kept breaking my heart over and over. She always had an excuse to not see or talk to us. She has now not seen my children in two years. 
A few days ago, she called and apologized for not seeing us more. She says she feels bad, but not that bad because she had hurt her ankle from running and that wasn't her fault. Mind you, I have offered to visit any time. I am a stay-at-home mom right now. They only live six hours away. I've offered to stay in a hotel, anything. They always say no because their house isn't baby-proofed and they refuse to because they already took all the baby-proofing stuff off for their own kid. I'm at a point in my life where I am just trying to keep the peace with her and not have any drama. So I said, it's okay, mom. I know you are a very ambitious person. I know you wanted to have it all, a career, health, and a new daughter. And sometimes that means you struggle a bit more to do things. I forgive you. She then said, um, okay, in a very offended tone. I tried to continue talking to her, but I could tell she wanted to get off the phone. So I said, sorry, I'll let you go. And she said, yeah, I think I have to go in a very irritated tone. I said, love you, bye. And she said it back, but I haven't talked to her since. I told my husband and he said, I pretty much told her she chose her career over me and I'm a jerk. This truly was not my intention. I thought I was being very mature and understanding. Was I the jerk for telling my mom I forgive her for being too busy trying to have it all to be there for me? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot, but at this point, I think you have to accept that she doesn't think she's done anything wrong and move on accordingly. She's not really part of your life or your kids' lives. So it's really up to you as to whether or not you want to bother with phone calls that seem to be more out of obligation than anything else. All you seem to be getting out of this is hurt. So why keep doing it? Comment two, not the idiot. It's in our nature to crave the attention of our parents. Unfortunately, you are on the short end of the stick for that. Maybe it's best you create a life for you and your children now. Maybe being without her and constantly being disappointed for the lack of will just encourage you more to be involved with your children so you don't make the same mistakes she did. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a month since I shared my story and a lot has happened since then. I wanted to give you all an update on the situation with my mom. After that awkward phone call with my mom, things took a turn for the worse. I had hoped that maybe, just maybe, she would take my words to heart and try to make amends. Instead, she became more distant. It was like she had decided that since I had forgiven, she didn't need to make any effort anymore. My mom's ambition has always been a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's what drove her to go back to school and become a nurse, and then to get her master's degree. On the other hand, it's what pushed me out of the picture. I remember when she first started her triathlon training, she was so determined to be the best that she would often ignore her injuries, which only made them worse. Her drive to succeed was admirable, but it came at a cost. The heartbreak came when I found out through my aunt, of all people, that my mom had thrown a huge birthday party for my little sister. It was a lavish affair with all the bells and whistles and my kids and I weren't even invited. It felt like a punch to the gut. I couldn't understand how she could exclude us like that. It was a clear message that we weren't a priority in her life. I confronted her about it and the conversation was one of the most painful I've ever had. She told me that it was just easier to have the party without us there. Easier for whom I wanted to scream. But I held it together, barely. She said that with her busy schedule and all the preparations, she didn't think we would miss one party. But it wasn't just one party, it was a pattern of neglect. My husband tried to be supportive, but he was just as hurt and confused as I was. He couldn't understand how my mom could be so cold. He had always been there for me, even when my own parents weren't. He reminded me of the time when we first started dating and he had to teach me how to ride a bike because my mom was too busy training for her triathlons to ever teach me. It was a bittersweet memory, one that highlighted just how much I had missed out on. The situation with my mom has put a strain on our marriage too. My husband feels like I keep trying to get blood from a stone and maybe he's right, but she's my mom and I can't help but want her in my life and in my kids' lives. Things came to a head last week when my mom had another injury from her running. 
She called me, not to apologize or to talk about the party, but to ask for my help. She needed someone to take care of her while she recovered. I was torn. Part of me wanted to rush to her side and prove that I was the better person. But another part of me was just so tired of being the afterthought. I told her I would think about it, and we hung up. I haven't called her back yet. I don't know if I can put myself and my kids through that again. It's one thing to be ignored, but it's another to be used only when it's convenient. My kids have started asking about her, wondering why we don't visit grandma anymore. It breaks my heart to see them so confused and hurt. They don't understand the complexities of adult relationships, and I don't know how to explain it to them without tarnishing their image of their grandmother. I'm still trying to figure out what to do next. My mom's ambition has always been a part of who she is, but I never thought it would cost her the relationship with her daughter and grandchildren. It's a sad realization that sometimes, no matter how much you want to fix things, it might not be possible. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.